going to talk about how to make a new website through the new RStudio preview and using Blogdown. So first things you should do is go to RStudio preview, Google that. So this will bring you to the download section of our studio's IDE, but it will bring you to the preview section. So if you, uh, depending on when this, uh, when you view this video, uh, our studio may have already come out with these features, but currently the features that I'm talking about with respect to our studio are only for the preview version. So we will be using version 1.1.345, which I've already have downloaded, and we're going to start a new project. So um, also, you need to make sure that you have the package blog down installed. So first we're going to do install.packages, blog down. Um, I already have that installed, but we can reinstall it again. No big deal. So we're going to have that installing in the background. And once that's done, we are going to start a new RStudio project. So I think this is the easiest way to create a new website. So we're going to say new project, new directory. And you'll see after you've installed Blogdown, you'll say it'll have this option, create a new website using Blogdown. So I'm going to call my project um, a, uh, a friend's name who I'm building a website for. I'm going to put that under my projects directory. You can browse and go to wherever you want. Again, um, depends on how you are uh, doing your file management. So I don't want to add any simple blo sample blog posts. Um, uh, I do want to add the example site of the theme. So right now, the, the default is uh, Hiwa, Ihue's Hugo Lithium theme. So what I'm going to do before I create the project, I'm going to go and look at some, I'm going to again say Hugo themes. So it's themes.gohugo.io. And you'll see here that there are a bunch of different types of themes that you can do for this for, for your website. So I would suggest going through this, starting out and looking at this, um, and getting a feel for what you really want before diving in and making your web page. So um, here, the academic one, I think it is pretty good for academics, and maybe that would be the majority of people looking at this. But um, Hide, some other ones like that are, are really good uh, templates that I believe are, are clean, are, are nice looking, and have a lot of great defaults that you want. So um, my friend's not an academic, so I believe I'd want to change maybe a little bit of what, what he's looking for. So we're going to go to maybe look by popularity. So let's see. So simple, minimalist, let's see if popular. No, nope, they, don't, they don't rank them by that. So let's see. Um, again, that's just the themes. Um, responsive. No, personal. So you want a personal website? I think maybe that would be um, a good thing. I, th I like I like Arial. I like this big background here. I like having you know something simple uh, that's really just a contact page uh, for that person that I can add content to later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click download. Well, first off, I want to see the demo. I want to actually see what I'll be looking at. So, okay, so this allows you for mail, maybe a GitHub page, maybe some other pages, gives you a little bit of things there. And it's really relatively simple. So it's really just a contact page um, that allows you to maybe add some content. But for this, for this, uh, for this tutorial, I think we're gonna make an academic web page because I think that'll be the most useful for most of the people. So let's just look at a demo. So you should have seen a lot of things like this where they have publications, they can put posts, Right, so you can put a little blog on here. You can say these are the projects you're working on. This is the teaching you're working on. And here's how you get some contact. So I like this theme. So I'm going to say download. And that will bring you to a GitHub web page. And you don't need to know anything really about GitHub for now. What you need to do is copy up here the name and the theme. So we are going to paste that into the Hugo theme. And we are going to create a project. So this will install Hugo on your machine. Hugo is an engine that allows you to create static web pages. You don't really need to know what is going on there, but you will see a warning here for certain things like that that say, you are recommended to ignore certain files in your config file, and that being RMD files, R markdown files, or files or caches. So we are gonna just paste that in there. Also, we are gonna change the base URL to just a slash. So. Um, before we do anything here, we're just going to say, okay, we're going to leave all the defaults to be exactly what they want, what they are. Okay. Now, what do we do? 
So we already have a website built. So we're going to load up the blog down package. And we are going to say build site. So also, um, I believe in the new RStudio, the add-ins, uh, you should be able to click a down arrow here and it should say serve site, new post, um, update metadata. So uh, serve site will actually, uh, let's click that. Let's see what it will do. It will build everything and it will show you um, the results. So not found. Let's see if I build it that way. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we keep it as, as what it was, if it will actually build. I don't believe that it will. Let's see, yeah. I think the base URL should simply be slash. So if we're using the academic, I think this is probably the most important um, error that we're going to get. So this is just some other things about the menu. Um, so what I'm going to do is not serve the site yet. I want to build it. Okay. Um, let's see if we kill this. So if we click serve site, we're going to get a little error here and not have that go on. So for now, we're not going to do anything with this. We're not going to do um, anything with respect to RStudio, and we will fix that error before we move on. But what I will say is uh, how to get this up actually on a website. So if you go to Tools, Version Control, you should go to Project Setup. We are going to use everything through GitHub. So we want to say our version control is Git. It says yes, I want to initialize a GitHub. We will restart our studio and now we will be ready to go with respect to version control. Version control is important because if you break something on your website, you want to be able to go back and save that. So we're going to commit everything. So I'm going to say this is our first commit, and we are going to say commit. Okay. So now what has happened? On our local machine, um, so on the machine we're working on, we have a GitHub repository that now is version controlled. That is not to say that anything is on GitHub. So what we're going to do is go to github.com and we're going to make a new online repository on the GitHub repository system. So I'm going to say new repository. I'm going to call it the same name I had before, website for a friend. I'm going to keep it public. I'm going to say create repository. Okay, once we've done that, it allows us to give a few instructions. Um, if we want to create a new repository at the command line or push an existing repository, um, this is what we're going to do. It says git remote add and git push. So what that will do is it will say, hey, um, I want you to point to this GitHub repository when you do anything, and I want you to actually push all the commits that we currently have on our computer to the internet. So what we can now do in our studio, which is fantastic, is get a terminal window up. So if you don't see that, you should be able to say, um, I believe, file, uh, new terminal. Sorry, so it's tools, terminal, new terminal window if you don't see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just paste the two commands that we have from our GitHub. Now, if you see something like git command not found, that means you have to set a git into your path. And if you Google on, you know, put git in path, Windows or Mac, it will give you the instructions on how to do that. So, but I have that set up already, so we've pushed it. So now let's go back to our website. Let's go back to the GitHub, the GitHub repository. And we see now if I refresh the page, all of our lovely things should be in there. So the things you should note is public. Public is where the content of your website that faces the world is. Now, what we're going to do um, is use a service called Netlify to host this. So if you go netlify.com. So now, if you already have the GitHub, you can just log in. And I'm going to serve a new site from Git. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's GitHub. 
I'm already authorized. I'm going to look for my repository. I say great. Build command. The command is Hugo. And the directory that we are going to publish is the public directory. So if we say deploy site, So, some things run. We got some errors here, which I'm not really sure about. Um, so, we seem to have some errors here, but like any tutorial, I think it's useful to go through the actual errors if they occur. So. So here's our configuration file. There's also a file called theme. It talks about the license and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's see. Base URL uh, should be that. So give me one moment so I can actually take a look at some, some of my other projects. Just to make sure that I have the configuration correctly specified to tell you um, what's going on. So let's open this with our studio. Ah, so we don't want the base URL to be that. Uh, I think in this one we want it to be the about page. So let's see what happens. Oop, didn't mean to click that. Uh, if we do serve site again. Um, let me just double check what is different. Ah, I believe uh, the problem occurs when you have this this uh, comment at the end of this line. That might not be true though. Oh, seems to be it is. Okay, so the comment at the end of the line is not really what you want. So uh, that is a simple, simple error that seems to be so uh, weird that um, I don't know why that would be uh, by default in there. So um, that might just be a way blog down works. So just having a comment at the end of the line um, can be a little bit problematic. So, okay, that's all we're going to change. We could have made it slash, I believe, and we should be able to serve the site again. Great. So, now the one thing you need to do is change this to be not at the, so you can put it above or below, but not at the end of the line. Um, I may try to talk to Ihue and discuss that with him, uh, how to maybe correct that if that is a blog down error. So now if you don't like using the command line where you say serve site or build site, so build site, and if you've never seen this, this is just package colon colon the function name, so I don't actually have to necessarily load the package up there to use its functions. I can directly say like this is what I'm going to use. So if you don't like that, you can always use the add-ins. Um, you can create a new post. You can create, uh, update some of the metadata. Current document doesn't seem to have any YAML metadata. That's fine. So here, I'm going to say the title is something else. So my name, copyright. Let's say that. Um, there's some other things we can put there. So what is your name? So let's say... So stuff like that, where you can start adding and changing some of these configuration files around, and now you are ready to go. So let's say, let's say I'm building my website, and now I'm a maker of products. I'm not at Stanford. So now, let's say I serve my site up. Let's build it. Let's serve it. If you click this little button here, this will actually pop out in your browser so I can see what's really going on. So John Michelle, maker of products, I can put my mail, my Twitter, my GitHub, or my Google Scholar page. So I can click my publications, my posts. You will see also that all these things are now in there, are now in the content folder. And I know this isn't you, so how do we actually change some of this stuff? So before we go to changing some of the content, let's go back to Netlify. So again, now we've got the configuration, right? This isn't a nightmare. So now all we have to do is commit. So let's say make our changes stick. Let's say 
fixing our website. We'll commit it. Now that's changed on our computer. Now we'll push it to the web. That'll be changed on our GitHub. And now if we refresh, if we go back to deploys, you'll see something like building or um, processing or something like that. So it's saying, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm grabbing your changes. I'm running uh, the Hugo command to build your package. So you will see current theme does not support Hugo version uh, 0.17. So there may be some things you have to change in the deployment. Let me see. I believe there's a way to um, say which version of Hugo that you are using. So the thing is, um, Edit settings. That is the command. Build hooks. <clears throat> hmm. So, you go version Netlify. Uh, how to test. So, let's see. Let me just say version. So, that didn't work. So, how do we actually do this? So, build with a specific Hugo version. Ah, so you have to use an underscore. So in this case, with the academic website, we can't just say Hugo. We have to say Hugo underscore 0 0.24. So that will always build with a specific version of Hugo. Let's go back to our deployments. And now let's, so let's say retry deploy, clear the build cache, get everything out of there. Let's try it from fresh. And let's make sure that we're using Hugo 0.24. Every, everything's happy. It was using an older version of Hugo. Um, it says not found. So this, that might not have actually been possible. So, interesting. Ah, so that might not have been available. So it says uh, available Hugo versions. Um, ah, so it only goes up to point nineteen, at least for Linux. So it seems like we might not be able to use this theme um, with the current version of Hugo. Interesting. I'm going to look at some of my other uh, deployments because um, let's see. Let me go back to all my deployments to see how I got it to actually run because I had this working before. Well, what happened? I just said Hugo. It seemed to be working. Um, but let's look at some of the deployments. Ah, we had some fails. Ah, so at the end of the day, in this specific instance, you may not be able to use the Hugo from the website. So, okay, here's the deal. So Netlify is a great service. It is free. It allows you to host your website. But if you would like to use this current theme, you will have to build your website yourself and then not have it build the site for you. So what we will do is we will say edit settings, get rid of the build command, and then nothing will be tried. It'll just say, hey, 
you built it yourself. So we say build site. We have the new and improved version of Hugo. Everything's updated. And once we push it to the web, which we already have, nothing has changed. We are going to say trigger a deployment, clear the build cache, get everything out of there. I don't want you to do anything other than host what I already have on my website. And I want you to let me see what's on there. Hmm. Why did it not change? That should not have done it. Oh, I'm on the wrong site. I triggered the wrong thing. Just make sure. Edit the settings. Get rid of that. Save it. All right, so everything should be saved. Deployments. Let's just double check one last time. It doesn't seem to like getting rid of that. Interesting. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna trash the entire thing. I'm gonna say, you know what? Get out of here. So one thing you can do is go to settings, just copy this long, strange thing that they generate randomly. Let's gen let's go from the start again. Call it a GitHub. So again, everybody, this is how things work with you know trial and error. All right, so it says I'm gonna clone it. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna build. Uploading the file to your website. I am now op Optician Jim. I was a fishmonger before. Um, these are just randomly generated things that you can change a little bit later. But the, the, the site is now live. Now you have a website that has HTTPS abilities. All right, you have a secure, you have a secure certificate for these things. Now you have your website. It's on somewhere. Yeah, I know this name isn't really great, but we can change that. We can change that, and we can use Google Domains or something else um, to allow you to, to allow you to do that. So if you say Netlify Google Domains, so if you don't know about Google Domains, I would highly suggest it. It's about twelve dollars a year to get things up and running. So you can register a new domain. And then you can set up the DNS. So DNS essentially says, hey, forward this. If I go to this link, which is a nice little link, ebrandjames.com, if I go there, what is it actually going to go to? It's going to go to my Netlify um, page, that random thing that was generated. But again, if you want to say, hey, I just want to get something kind of looking okay, I want to send it to a collaborator, whatever, then you can uh, change the settings. So the site name. So you can change the site name to be, you know, John website.com dot, dot netlify.com. And now if I go there, everything is just shifted over. I can use that. I can send that to collaborators. I can put that on my what my my faculty homepage, and then people can go to John website.netlify.com. And once it's done moving everything over, we should see the same thing we see here. It says not found because I didn't. I'm impatient and I didn't let everything copy over. But now it has. I can refresh the page. And I can look at the deployments. And I should be able to go to that page. I might have to trigger another deployment just to say, hey, you know, refresh the page. So if you do change the name, you might have to trigger another deployment. But now you have a version-controlled website. It says site is live. So if I go there, oh my god, look how beautiful it is. So now we have publications, all that kind of stuff. So now you have the things you need to have a working first-class website with modern themes. But none of this content is yours. So where is this content housed? So let's, let's open the files. So we see... Content, data, layouts, public, static, themes. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to just go to my terminal and say open period, which means open the directory that it's in, and by default, it will be the, <clears throat> it will be the uh, directory that the package is in, or the project. So we see here, clothing search. Right, we see these things here. Um, before we go to actually changing posts and adding data, let's look at this, this configuration file for a minute. So we saw if we change this, like I'm at Johns Hopkins, 
university uh, avatar. I want my picture up there. Like if you want to put your picture, great. I'm going to put my web, I'm going to put my email. I'm going to put my address maybe. I'm going to put my office hours. I'm going to put my phone number, Skype, Telegram. Where is my, where is my, uh, you want to enable math jacks? I would say yes. Just globally enable it because, you know, we're, I'm a statistician. I think it's great. Highlight JS. Do you want to uh, enable global source code highlighting? If false, you can override it for a particular page. You know what? I think I'm going to do that because I like to write code. We say highlight true. Sharing true. Custom CSS. If you like JavaScript or CSS, you can do that. Publication types. These are the different types of things. Let's see. Okay. So now, params.social. What is this saying? This is saying, let's look at this website. What does this website look like? Oh my gosh, there's a Twitter, there's a Google thing, there's a, there's a GitHub thing. That's what this is talking about, params.social. This is a way in the configuration to say, what is the icon? Uh, icon pack is saying there's a font awesome. So if you Google font awesome icons, it will bring you to this website that shows you all these really cool icons that are that exist. Um, so this is just the package of icons that it's using. Um, you can look at here and see all the different th things you could add in there for for types, right? You can put Twitter.com. I'm gonna I'll say strictly stat. So again, all these things that you want to add in there to your website, you can add more, right? So I could just say, let's go to font awesome. A flask, ah, flask, great. So now it's like, I want a flask, and I want it to go to, uh, so you just use the slash slash, you don't have to use HTTP or HTTPS, it will uh, inherit from your website. So if somebody goes to your website with an HTTPS, if somebody goes to your website with an HTTP, that's what will be put in there. Let's say I want to put a flask there, and I want to go to, um, I don't know, let's just say, uh, I don't know, let's say we have some sort of experiment, or shinyapps.io. I don't even know what I have on there anymore. But I'm going to grab one off there, and that's going to be my flask. And so I'll show you. Um, uh, get out of here. So let's see. Mm, pretty much everything's sleeping. Let's sign out of that. Let's log out. Oh, sorry about that. Now, okay, let's go with this one. So let's go to this. So that's some some shiny app that I want to put in there. And I can say, okay, that's where I want to go. I can take the, again, the HTTPS out there. I can save it. Now I'm going to go, again, build the site. Then we're going to do what? We're going to push it to GitHub. So again, I just do Command A, select everything. So now with Flask. And it's great. Now, I push that content up there. Now, again, from my home page. The reason every single web page looks like it got changed is because that is the sidebar for every single one of the web pages. So now, if I refresh this page a few times after it becomes live, I can see, you know, I can go to the deployments and see what's going on. See, it's saying processing. It's doing some processing. It says the site is live. So now I can refresh. And now we see this lovely flask. And if we click that, we go to the abandoned cars. So now, um, these are different Abandoned cars in Baltimore. Abandoned is a very strong word. Uh, if you park for more than two days in Baltimore City, you can be considered abandoned by the um, policies of the city. So now menu, let's look up here. Home, publication, post, uh, projects, teaching. So let's say, um, you know, you have different things here. Maybe you have a CV, right? So how do I actually, so this is my website. It is old. I am going to redo it. I am going to change it to the current things which I'm showing you right now. So I can say CV, and I give the P, I give the um, URL to this to my CV. I build the site, and again, version control push it back up to GitHub. Again, because this is of the menu, it looks like every single thing has has changed, but it hasn't 
necessarily the content, but the header has changed for every single page. That's the way things um, are going in there, or that's why it looks like everything's changed. Again, if we look at the deployments, it says it's uploaded, it'll take a minute to process, and now it says the site is live, so if I refresh, we see up here, now I have CV. I click there, oh, page not found. So um, the reason, I might have to put, sorry, I might, I might have to put a hard link there. So I'm going to say, hey, go to HTTPS. Do not assume this is some subdirectory. Again, everything's changed. Add CV with hard link to HTTPS. I push it. We go up. It's up on the website. I look at the deployments. It's uploading. If I go here, once it says site is live, I can refresh and I can click CV. Oops, sorry. There is some caching that is done with Google sometimes or with Google Chrome. Oops. May have failed. I may have failed you on this. So, uh, it doesn't look like, I don't know why. I don't know what this weight parameter is. Ah, it's the order in which it goes in, so you could put it somewhere else. Um, but, let me just make sure this is an actual, let's go somewhere. Ah, a little typo in our HTTPS with two colons instead of one. Build the site again. This is an iterative process, but I'm hopefully showing you how to do things in a trial and error way and, you know, mostly error. So you should also make your commit messages better than I am. Um, so um, this is just a tutorial, but I would be a little bit more explicit as to exactly what the commits were. So now, iterative process, going back and forth, upload, 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 cache, build, site is live, all right. Let's refresh it. So the link, we look at the bottom of the screen. If you're looking down here, if I hover over that, and then I go to that. Oh, there's my CV, which also needs to be updated. Now, okay, now we got the menu working to what we want. All right, we can change some categories, publication types, all that kind of stuff. Great. Let's talk about content. So again, sorry, I, I might have said before, content's where everything is. Public is where everything that faces your website is. Content is... Not surprisingly, where your content is. So getting started, writing markdown, LaTeX, managing content, right? So right now, these are some things. These are some points that they have in there. So let's do something a little bit different. Let's, let's do a new post. What's the post title? Moving, I don't know. Making a website author. All right, we can make tags. I want it in our markdown. Done. Got a new website. We can put tags in there. This is awesome. So note, I will say that configuration files uh, may be a little bit are very different, and these are a little bit confusing for some people starting out. But Blogdown has a different set of configuration files. So if you looked at the, uh, I will want to open this up in our studio. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm going to make it so that all of these open with our studio. Change all of them. Yes, I would like to open this with our studio all the time. So you'll see here that with posts, they have slash year, slash month, slash day, slash uh, what's called a slug. So that will tell me that it will order my posts by the day, the month, the year, so that they are in order. Uh, some of the posts in there do not are not in there, or, or sorry, are not. Um, excuse me, are not named the same way. So if we build the site now, it's going to actually render that markdown document and it's, I'll show you the added post. Many times though, a lot of academics are not making a blog, so you can take that post folder out completely if you want. Um, I'm going to 
upload everything, new post. Obviously, my cap blocks is on. Oop. Added MDs. Okay, now I push this to GitHub. Oh, this <laughs> pushed it, but those actually get deleted. Those were temporary files. Um, that didn't need to be in there. I was wondering why that looked a little strange. So now that things are running, things are going all fun, good. Uh, Again, there is some caching that goes on with uh, so you can click that uh, specific link. Ah, making a website! Look at that post. This is awesome. Uh, has all your links and all that kind of stuff in there. All right, that's how you can make a new post. But that's a lot of times not what you're doing. And you see in here, publications, clothing search, right? You can see here, this is, these are examples of some of the publications. Um, so they have a little different of a, uh, this is a very different type of syntax for some of the things you want to do. Um, so you can maybe grab one of these as an example. Um, let's open with it, this with our studio for the minute to take a look at what the highlighting kind of looks like. So it says publication types. So one, again, if you look at the configuration file, zero, one, one is conference proceedings, two is journal, work in progress, that kind of stuff. So you can use some of the information here, but a lot of times I might be, I'm, I'm more uh, used to doing something where, you know, I might say, you know, about me. Or let's 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 there already is a home page, so there's an about, right? So I'm not a big fan of some of the syntax necessarily that's in there. So I might um, delete this. So here are home, here are the individual pages, right? So publications, right? So title, subtitle, weight, count, all that kind of stuff. So these are little widgets. So if you want to do that, if you want to do, I'm going to do a new R Markdown document. I'm just going to say HTML. This is about John, simply John. Um, and I want to do something cool. I want to like load up ggplot2. I want to do, I want to load up Plotly. I want to make an interactive graphic. I want to, I want to wow some people, you know? I don't want to just put a plot. I want to, I want to build a GG plot, and I want to, you know, throw it, throw it in there, and I want to be like, hey, like, look at my, look what I can do. I can do some cool stuff. So I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to put that in the content. And you know what? This is going to be my about me page, about the RMD. That's going to, when I knit this, it's going to overwrite that about me page that already exists on the website. You know what? I don't want it. I don't want this MD file. So it's going to render my site. It's going to run all these commands. It's going to do all the caching, all that fun stuff that you'd be able to do for our markdown. I'm going to commit everything to the website. Now it's putting the libraries it's needing, like making awesome plots, you know. And now, if I push that up, it's going to say, hey, Look at my new website. Look what I look what I've made. Right? So we're building, we're building, getting a little deploy log. So we're, it's gonna take a second. It's gotta upload some stuff. Right? Because I published a bunch of these. I, I did this, uh, I, I did a, I did a lot of commits. Right? So he's deployed in eight seconds, ten seconds. This one's taking a little bit longer. Um, okay, let's check out the website for now. Lena Smith. This is taking a minute. Okay. So it's building. The robots are busy. So you robots on your website. You can tell everybody that your website is about robots. Um, it is a really nice format, so I would definitely go back to the format. I would have maybe copied and saved that about that uh, MD file and see kind of what's going on. Um, 
in there to maybe make it a maybe make it a little bit nicer. Um, actually, I've never used uh, some of these things before. Um, we may have got limited in kind of some of our pushes. Might have been a little bit too quick uh, pushing things on there. Might have uh, flagged us a little bit for. Um, Flag this a little bit for uh, you know over overusing the system, but I doubt that. I highly do. I think it just might be a little bit bog, blog, bog down. So I'm gonna just try to trigger a deploy again. Why it just seems to be spent. Well, anyway, uh, if we say serve site, which is what we're gonna do, so we'll do it locally. Just to, and you probably should be doing this just to take a look at what's going on. Failed to parse date. Ah, nothing has changed. What happened? Ah, oh, that didn't change the markdown document. Interesting. Let's delete that. Let's try to. Okay. Let's try to serve the site now. So we got a little error on there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna double check to see what's going on with that. We got a little error. Failed to parse the date. And homepage about. Well, let's just take a couple dates. Okay, we don't need a date. Okay. Let's look at our public, because this is where everything really is. This is really where all the, all the magic's happening. Project publication. So if you want to like, um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest deleting the stuff here. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's really what you want to do. Um, ah, so it took that out completely. Oh. I'm a liar. Oh my gosh, we have an interactive graphic. We have an interactive graphic about John. Interactive graphic on our website, on our homepage. You're brushing. This is this is thanks to Carson Seward and the great people at Plotly who make a fantastic product. But look at that. We got code. It's oh, we can get the highlighting in there and everything if we want. Oh golly gee. So we see, though, we see, though, that there are some things um, that are uh, not done in the same way, and that's because of the way it's set up. And I mean that in the sense, if I go, if I go to the configuration file and it says, like, about, it says wait one and that kind of stuff. And it's like, ah, oh, maybe that's the, maybe that's not where we're going. Um, and I mean that in the sense that uh, the order in which things are done doesn't seem to be working in the same way we, were, we would think. And so one thing we can do about that, uh, let's see. Let's look in the public folder. Where is our about? I see about files, yes. Yeah, so the question is, why, oh why, is that at the end? So you can always look at the index file to kind of get a gist as to what's going on there. So we see, Hmm. So, I don't really have an answer for you right now. Uh, that's not great. Um, I do have to, uh, for some reason, reason content in homes. So, it does seem like uh, the order in which things are done didn't exactly work uh, exactly the way we think. So, what I would say is, take a look at 
take a look at the um, help. Take a look at the um, take a look at the uh, what do I want to say? Take a look at the information in the original blog down configuration file and kind of go with that. So to play to link a home page widget, specify the URL as a hash followed by the file name of the desired widget in your content slash home folder. Oh, okay. So if we go to content home, right, we see um, the weight parameter defines the order. So it should be that. So the question about it is, uh, we might want to say in here, keep MD, keep MD true. So we might want to do that. Um, so let's try to serve the site up and let's see if that actually does what I think it's supposed to do. So before, so we see this knit and all that kind of stuff gets created. I think that's the command you use. Keep MD true. So that should have happened, but for some odd reason, we don't see that. We don't see the markdown still staying there. So, what what's the deal? So instead of instead of like, you know, hash, let's see if we can just say about. Let's see if that. Let's see if we can go, you know, that way. Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like that's what it wants. Oh, and why is the home all the way on here? Page not found. All right. Well, I gotta say, this configuration is a little bit different. Um, and it's gonna take some time. It takes a little bit of time um, to, you know, get it to do exactly what you want. Um, and that's a shame. Uh, that's kind of a shame because I thought it might be a little drag and drop in there. So, um, there are undoubtedly different ways you can, uh, do, you can change this around. Um, let's see. So let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at the theme, at the academic theme. So license, all that kind of stuff. If porting an existing theme, we may want to do this. That might be the way we want to do it. We may want to just do it with the blog down stuff, have it work the way we think it's supposed to work, and then kind of call it a day. Everything's in Markdown, but we can't get it to save for some odd reason. So we got about files, all this kind of stuff. Well, I've not been, this is not the best tutorial I've ever done. Uh, I will tell you that. Um, so, my apologies if I've wasted your time. Hopefully, though, uh, if you'd like to at least go through the blog down website, there are the blog down content. That would be maybe the way to go. <sighs> that is, uh, that's a little, that's a little sad. Um, we might be able to change something over here uh, with respect to the theme. Um, but it seems like, uh, discuss shortly. Yeah, it doesn't seem uh, that happy with what I'm doing. So uh, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, I'm gonna upload this and I'm gonna try to make this a little bit better in the next iteration. But uh, keep trial and erroring, and uh, hopefully the next time you can uh, we can uh, make this better. Thanks.